Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. In this video, I just want to show you a what I think is a very helpful skull drawing tool, uh, which is basically the small skull on a tripod that you can take, and then if you you know like drawing skulls at different angles, you can just position them in any way you like, just like that. And that skull has its mouth open. The skull has its mouth is closed. So I created. And I thought when I, you know, did the skull and tripod, I thought, oh, this is something I just created. I wonder if it exists in the world. And it does. A guy named uh, Proko, who has a very successful YouTube channel, he sells a skull on a tripod for a uh, hundred bucks. Um, my skull, you know, put together with parts from Amazon is around, I think, 35 bucks, maybe around 40 bucks. Uh, and I got one of these tripods, which are, the difference between my skull and his skull setup is this is a Manfrotto tripod. It's way better than the dinky little cheap tripod you get with his skull. Um, but I do like his skull. It has a removable jaw, which is pretty cool. Although his skull is kind of gimpy looking. Um, this one, you know, cheap skull made in China. These actually look pretty good. Teeth aren't the best, but overall it's a pretty good looking skull. So <clears throat> with this tripod, you can just hit the button on the back and then just put it any angle you like. With this skull with the mouth open, I uh, took, out, took off the springs, which I stuck underneath, that I've got under his jaw with a piece of tape, so that if I you know, decide I want to put it back on springs, I can just it, uh, um, break the cra little bit of crazy glue that's holding the, the mouth open. Because, you know, uh, an open mouth skull looks pretty cool. Uh, you can, you know, you can find a lot of skull poses on the internet um, like probably every angle you can get with this but it's really I think it's really great to be constantly drawing from life it's a little bit different than drawing from you know pictures online I actually think it's, it's better for your your drawing growth uh, I sort of, sort of view drawing as um, three things one drawing from life which is you know uh, not always from a new model, which is my favorite kind of drawing. But, uh, you know, drawing anything from life, really, whatever it be. And one of them is, I keep these on my kitchen table, and I just, whenever I'm feeling like it, I'll draw from them, just do quick sketches. Or, if I'm, you know, wanting to use them for reference, I'll, I'll just draw something, like, you know, take a little more time with it. I, like I was saying, I have to keep a very small sketchbook just on the on the kitchen table, and I'm just constantly just doodling from it, trying little little you know whatever comes to mind. But just 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 drawing. I'm, I'm of the mind that um, I'm I'm qual quantity over quality person. I believe that uh, I think I read it in the uh, what book was it? Some book on art, which was really really good. Um, the artist way, I think it was, by a female author, I forget what it was. But uh, she believed in quantity over quality, uh, meaning if you do the quantity, the quality of the drawing will take care of itself. There's more little, more little skulls that I did from, uh, from these little guys. So if you do, do the, do the quantity, the quality will take care of itself. And I, I, since I've read that, I've kept that in my mind to just keep hammering away, keep doing, uh, even when you're discouraged and things aren't going well, just keep, keep on drawing and, and things do start to improve. So these are probably my most used drawing skulls and um, I'm gonna, you know, maybe make some videos showing you some of like over the years, <clears throat> collected a lot of funny little skull things, uh, you know, some, some, some better than others, um, all kinds of interesting skull things. I will, I'm going to do some videos on my different skull things that I have, um, and just talk about them. I think that might be kind of interesting, but, um, I, just for this video, I kind of just want to show you why I love skulls so much. And it probably goes back to this, um, 1970s model rocket kit. I got from my dad for Christmas uh, called Dred Max, um, you know, based on German stuff. Very politically incorrect, but you know, back in the 70s, you know, anything goes. Uh, Nick Stompring, Mitt Graben, Motor Verkins. 
it's just all kind of funny. I like how on the on the little things that it is destroyed, it's got a, a palm tree and a little outhouse there. It's kind of and a little Volkswagen bug. That's kind of funny. And um, this one is from the '70s. It's flown a few times, um, but I was proud. I you know forget how old I might have been eight nine um, when I, I built it. And I was very proud of the job I did. And I even think to this day, it's still, I did a good job. I lined up the decals nice for a, a little guy. Um, I, and me and my brother and my dad went out and, and shot this. Out of all the rockets we had, this was probably the best flying rocket. Uh, there was, um, we had smaller rockets that flew higher and, and, and faster and bigger ones that didn't, like, that took bigger engines, but they didn't seem to fly as high or they're kind of slow looking. This one was the, seemed to be the perfect balance of, of being able to see it once it shot up really high, going up nice and high for the size of its engine and its rocket, and, and, and still then, and being able to find it after, like the little wee rockets that went really high, they got caught by the wind and we were flying in a kind of a semi-wooded area, um, a big open space, but it was had surrounded by woods. So it would, um, the little rockets all disappeared in the woods and we never found them again. But this rocket, even though it had probably what, three flights maybe. Um, and I had to re-glue these wings back on because they broke as well. It had three flights and um, uh, always, I always got it back. I just remember one time when we had um, launched it, um, it, I backed up really fast from the launch pad to get back and you know, the launch pad. My brother was probably operating the ignition or whatever. And I backed into a tree so hard that I, um, I winded myself and I'd never been winded before. I was a little guy and I really thought I wasn't going to make it, but um, that was fine. I also think a sticker went up here as well, but it's gone now. A couple stickers actually. But anyway, yeah, I destroyed, I was a very destructive little kid. I broke pretty much all my toys very quickly. Um, and, uh, and and if I couldn't break them by hand, I'd put them in the door and try and smash the door into the mud of my way. But this is one toy that I just, uh, I kept. One of the only toys I've kept my whole life. I just liked it so much. And one last interesting thing on this, this rocket, uh, they reissued it. And um, I'll show you some pictures. Here's the pictures of the, of the original instructions. The original instructions had um, uh, this little, German guy giving you, um, telling you how to how to build it, like a little German school guy giving you funny little instructions. Put the thing there, like you don't. That didn't seem sound German. That's awful. Anyway, um, uh, so he's giving you instructions. But in the reissue, I was reading online, it, it doesn't. It's just instructions. That little German guy. There's bullets flying around his head, and the bullet, you know, takes a chunk out of his helmet, and finally the bullet goes through his head and cracks his monocle. I guess they took. While the you know the rock itself is pretty politically incorrect, um, the I guess the instructions were you know in today's era even too much, so they they totally they didn't include it, which were really funny. I thought that like I don't have them, wish I kept them, but I thought the instructions were, were, were pretty funny. So okay, back to the little skulls, brief diversion. So that's that's probably why the first skull thing I ever had my probably my introduction to skulls. And just take one last look at that little guy. I just love that little guy. It's like, I think he might be my favorite little school graphic ever. So anyway, um, how to make this guy. So there's the Manfrotto tripod. I think I got one of them in Amazon warehouse deals and it was 20 bucks, so it was even cheaper. Then this $10 skull. And then there's a little a threaded adapter that you can see. So it goes right through the, the, the top of the skull right there, and this adapter comes with this piece, it's camera part. But, but you can use probably any nut, but I, 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 if I remember correctly, it's been a while since I made these, I um, ground out a little bit here just to make it a little bit bigger so this this other piece would fit, it would fit just a little bit better. And you just screw it on down. And there you go. Skull on, skull on a stand. Works quite well.
And like I said, it's a really good tripod. You can use it for other things. If you don't want to keep a skull on your desk all the time. But if you're like me, if you're a skull lover or slubber, uh, then I'd say it's, it's like a awesome must have. I draw from these all the time. So. Okay guys, hope you stay well out there. And you know, this is just a little break reaction, but we'll get back to the regular programming soon. And we'll talk to you very soon. Take care.